Hello everyone and welcome back to Poser's Movie Recaps. Today's movie is a romantic comedy film about a wife and two mistresses who team up against a cheating husband. The film opens with Carly Whitten, a New York attorney, and Mark King, a charismatic businessman. The two are having an intimate moment at Carly's apartment, and have been seeing each other for a couple of months. Mark does his best to make Carly happy and satisfied, but the man has a secret, he is married to a chatty woman named Kate, who is a stay-at-home housewife at their house in Connecticut. At the office, Carly talks with her assistant Lydia, who informs her about a dinner date with her dad and her boyfriend Mark. Meanwhile, Mark gets a call from Kate, reminding him of their dinner with a friend. When Mark postpones it because of a meeting, Kate eagerly offers to come to meet him after the said meeting. Mark furiously declines, not wanting Kate at his office and possibly discovering his extramarital activities. He tells his wife that he will cancel the supposed meeting and go home to dinner with her. When Mark picks up Carly, he makes some excuses about a pipe bursting at his house back in Connecticut. He also informs her that he cannot attend the dinner with her dad, and Carly is upset about it. The same night, Carly meets his father named Frank, and tells him that Mark and she might have broken up, but he encourages her to go to his house anyway. The next evening, Carly dressed up in a seductive plumber's outfit and headed to Connecticut. However, she is horrified when Kate meets her at the door and introduces herself as Mark's wife. She quickly makes some lame excuse to leave and accidentally breaks one of the garden urns. The next day, Carly is still enraged with what she discovers and tells Lydia that Mark is married and she doesn't date a married man. Later, Kate shows up at Carly's office and asks her if she's sleeping with her husband. When she admits it, Kate starts to loudly cry and Carly goes with her to a bar to answer all her questions. At the end of the night, Kate gets really drunk and Carly has to force her inside a taxi just to get her home. Kate is so distraught because she cannot imagine being divorced and going back to the dating pool at her age. She did what every sane wife does and shows up with her huge dog at Carly's office building again. Kate clearly doesn't have any life outside her marriage and clings to the first person who talks to her after she discovers her husband's infidelity. Initially, Carly is annoyed by Kate showing up unannounced at her work and apartment, but eventually, she starts to warm up to the woman. The two shares their sorrow and spend some quality time drinking and braiding each other's hair literally. They strangely become good friends and Carly gives her some legal advice on getting a divorce. The next day, Kate calls Carly for some more advice because she trashes all of Mark's things at his office. Carly quickly goes to Kate's home and later meets Kate's brother, Phil, to who she instantly gets attracted. After noticing the attraction between Carly and Phil, Kate tells Carly that she can't have both her husband and brother because that's being greedy. When Mark sees his office, Kate tells him that it's her surprise because she starts redecorating. Mark appreciates the gesture and starts getting intimate with his wife. But since Kate knows that her husband is cheating, she feels awkward spending time with him. So again, the sanest idea she thought is to call Carly and ask for advice on what to do if her husband initiate intercourse with her. Carly gets annoyed and tells Kate to just do it because Mark is still her husband. Later, the couple starts to get intimate but Kate excuse herself to go to the bathroom. She starts shaving parts of her body, while Mark receives a phone call from another lady friend that he has. When Kate goes out of the bathroom and finds the bedroom empty, she starts searching for Mark. She found him and overhears Mark talking with his lady friend, and her mood dies down. The next day, Carly sends Kate an apology text, and Kate is still enraged because she thought that it was Carly that was talking to Mark last night. In her despair, she blurts out to Phil that Mark is cheating on her, and that Carly is Mark's mistress. Later, Kate meets Carly who has no idea about the sudden change in Kate's demeanor towards her. When Kate directly accuses Carly of still sleeping with her husband, Carly is upset and explains that she isn't seeing Mark anymore. The two realize that Mark has another girlfriend, and they plan to get evidence against him. Kate and Carly start following Mark to Miami and try to spy on him. The two stay at Phil's beach house where Phil asks Carly to look out for her crazy innocent sister. When they follow Mark at the nearby beach, the two are shocked and they see Amber, a gorgeously attractive much younger second mistress of Mark. They argue about Mark's changing preferences, as both of them are in their late 30s and Amber appears to be in her early 20s. Carly chases Amber as she jogs so Kate stops her, but young woman notice the two of them catfighting at the beach and ask them what's going on. Later, the three talks about Mark, and Amber is furious upon discovering that Mark is married to Kate and Carly is his girlfriend too. Amber apologizes to both of them, but Kate explains that she doesn't hate her and adds that Mark told her that Kate cheated on him and asked for a divorce. This makes Kate upset for making her the bad guy for fake cheating, and leave Amber despite her protest and just take her number. Later, Kate invites Amber to Phil's beach house and while the two have a super strange bonding, Carly and Phil start to get closer together. In the morning, 
Kate starts to realize how serious her situation is and states how she wants Mark to suffer in return. The three women conspire to inflict ultimate revenge on Mark and start planning their next move. Carly will take care of all the legalities, Kate will share everything shady that she knows about her husband, and Amber's good looks to destroy Mark in any possible way. Back home, Kate starts messing with Mark's personal stuff by adding some hair removal lotion to his shampoo. She also adds some estrogen pills to Mark's protein shake, so he will develop breasts. Meanwhile, at Carly's dinner date with Mark, she sneaks laxatives into his drinks while Mark flirts with another lady. Since the laxative is fast acting, Mark is unable to wait to go home and defecate his pants inside the restaurant. He asks a guy to buy him some trousers, but gets cheated and goes home wearing red tight pants. Carly meets up with his dad who introduces Amber to him. She asks her dad for some advice on hypothetically losing money. Since she figures out that Mark is embezzling funds from various startup companies his workplace helps to develop. The next time the three ladies see each other, they decide that one of them needs to sleep with Mark and play rock paper scissors, which Amber wins. Amber is wary to spend some intimate time with Mark, but Kate assures her that she's okay with it. But when Kate goes home, she watches their wedding videos while crying and wearing her wedding gown. She realizes that she still loves her husband and proceeds to sleep with him in a moment of weakness. The next day, Carly shows Kate the list of firms from which Mark embezzles funds where he deposits his secret money in the Bahamas. Kate expresses her wish to no longer continue their revenge on Mark, which makes the other two women furious about it. Carly quickly figures out that Kate slept with Mark, and to prove her point, she tries to text Mark about hanging out with her. Kate not waiting for Mark's reply walks out of Carly's apartment, and Carly receives a response that Mark is open to meeting on Friday. Later, Carly meets Phil for dinner where she shares her struggles because she feels like she always comes out as harsh, even if she doesn't mean to. Meanwhile, Mark gives Kate a Z-pack which is the cure to chlamydia, thinking that he got one from Amber when she makes it an excuse so she won't need to sleep with him. When Mark asks her to sign some more papers and mention the Bahamas, her doubt comes back and goes to Carly to apologize. Kate shows some wire transfer documents to Carly, but Carly refuses to get involved anymore because she wants to forget Mark and move forward in her life. After Kate leaves, Carly peeks at the document and figure out the worst. Mark is using Kate's name and signature on those documents, which means more jail time for Kate than for Mark if everything gets discovered. Carly and Amber follow Kate to the Bahamas, who intends to find out more about the bank where the man keeps his illegal funds. When Kate learns about her name being used on every illegal thing that Mark does, she freaks out thinking about jail time. The three ladies spy on Mark and discover that he has another girlfriend in the Bahamas. After they discover which bank Mark uses, the three decide to seize the moment and have fun on their odd mini vacation. Early in the morning, Kate is at the beach and decides that she is ready to move on and throws her wedding ring into the water. Carly and Amber join her and the three embrace each other. Later, Kate goes to the bank and Carly handles some documents that she needs. Back in New York, Mark visits Carly at her law firm, where Lydia directs him to the conference. He is stunned to see his wife Kate, his girlfriend Carly, and his summer fling Amber together in the room. Kate accuses him of infidelity and handles him a list of all their assets and a divorce paper to sign. When Mark sees the figures, Kate reveals that they are aware of his embezzlement, and since he named her the CEO of all the companies, she returns all the money he steal leaving Mark bankrupt. Mark refuses to believe that the three women have the guts to riff him off, especially his wife who previously asks to attend a brain camp to make herself smarter. He tries to blackmail Kate that it's her name in all the documents, so they explain about restitution when suddenly one of Mark's business partners shows up. Mark losses his cool and starts walking out of the room. Unfortunately, he goes the wrong way and smashes his face first into the glass wall. Even with a broken nose, Mark rushes to the nearest computer to check his financial account. When he finds them all empty, he hysterically yells out loud and again walks into a glass wall. When he steps outside, he finds that his car is being towed for illegal parking. He cries angrily and wonders if things could be any worse. Suddenly, Frank shows up out of nowhere and punches him in the face knocking Mark out. Later, the three women celebrate with a toast, and the film ends showing Kate getting more involved in business, Carly finally dating Phil, and Amber starting a relationship with Frank. Did you enjoy today's movie recap? Write your comments down below.